Hello, and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play Part 32. Well, as you can see from this nice title screen, I'm finally on Minecraft version 1.0.0, the full release. I am so excited to finally be on 1.0.0. All the cool features, the new exploration to do, it's going to be awesome. I will say this though, it took a long time to get everything working. And unfortunately, I had to drop uh, Zombies Mod Pack, so I no longer have that on. As you can tell from the now altered uh, top left corner, that's a what's up there now is a coordinate display from actually Control Pack, latest version of Control Pack. And it might have been an earlier version, but I know it's in the latest version that Control Pack has a coordinates display. So that's fairly good. Um, there we go. Now that that's fixed. As you can see, all the uh, wires have been picked up. And they're now all in my inventory. The, um, yeah. Fortunately, they all still have their 60,000 EUs, but their function now, they all are on, they all do medium voltage, which is 128. Bat boxes do um, 32, uh, which is low voltage, and then MFSUs do high voltage, which is 512. So, this part is going to be mostly my running around my base, fixing everything that's broken because it, uh, of the upgrade. Like, for example, all these torches that were placed before I upgraded were on wires that now don't exist anymore, and so they're all floating torches. But, uh, so yeah. I've been working with 1.0 for a while now, and so I've actually sort of gotten used to the lighting. I'm um, still going to add lights here and there. And I could always just turn the brightness away up like this, but, you know. It just feels too bright. This just feels too dark. So I'm still sort of getting the feel of the uh, lighting. Because I think I'll have to fiddle with it for several episodes before I really get it the way I like it. I think 50 is where I like it. So, anyway. Um, two things to note real quick. I tweaked the settings for Industrial Craft so that holding control will activate both the jump and the speed, because that's what I'm used to, that's what I'd like. By default, it's bound to sprint, so when you sprint, you sprint super fast. And I have Industrial Craft sounds off, because with Industrial Craft sounds on, they're so loud, and I don't know how to adjust them, that it's really hard to hear me talking when they're on. Also, I was unable to find a mod to change the chests from the way they look now to um, the way they used to look, because I was hoping I would be able to. I found a mod that does, in fact, do that, but the problem is it broke the save. Like, it literally would not work with this save. It seemed to work fine with ordinary worlds, but uh, even though I could load the world just fine, every time I clicked this lever, bam, saving chunks error. Or as in it dropped the saving chunks and that'd be that, so unfortunately that's no good. The um redstone does seem to be working okay. So that's also good. My clock generator seems to be doing fine, because I wouldn't want that to break because that's what powers the alarm, so anyway, you also notice the dog's missed his name. And uh Melon seeds, yeah. The armor stand turned into melon seeds, and those um, uh, training treats I had turned into uh, collar shears. Well, anyway, the dog doesn't um, have his levels anymore. So, eh, I only need 60 to do this. Put that there, that there. Just arrange my inventory here. Alright, so right click him with a stick and he just sort of gets up, gets down. He's just an ordinary dog. So I have to. Oh, actually, I 
actually have to first trade, give him a training tree. There we go. Now, I can right click him, and he's a level 1 dog. Oops. There we go. But now, I need him to be level 60. So I'll give him all these training treats. This new system is infinitely better than the chance-based system of before. And he's level 60 now. Good. So now I'm going to give him Hellhound, Wolf Mount, Fisher Dog, Pillow Paw, and instead of Doggy Dash, Puppy Eyes. Um, there are all these skills. Those are the, uh, not Puppy Eyes, but the other four and Doggy Dash are the ones that directly influence uh, Wolf Mount. Uh, puppy Eyes lets you, um, get items from the villagers once you find an NPC village. So I got that instead of Doggy Dash, because all Doggy Dash does is increase speed a little bit. Okay, so now that's done. Now I need a sign, so let's see. I had trading treats before, so I'll do that, toss those, toss that. Let's see here. Because you use signs to alter their state. By default, they appear to be by default in docile. Which if I cycle through here, so those those are the different modes. I'm going to be setting him to aggressive. He won't be very strong in combat, but it'll be something. Now, let's see. I don't like how you can look through there, but simply by dint of having seen it a lot over the last couple of days as I've been working with the mods, I've been getting kind of used to it, so. Um, since those chests are all full of cobblestone, and, and really all these chests are just full of stone, gravel, and dirt, I'm thinking that I might rearrange them, and maybe just reorganize a bit. I don't know. I'm kind of not that interested in doing that, simply because it works, so. Let's see. Got a painter. Instead of a cable obscurator, which I guess makes sense. Because there's no. Because some things in Industrial Craft 1 simply have no direct function in Industrial Craft 2, like the cable obscurator. You can't hide your cables. Painter has a different function, but is somewhat similar, so. Anyway. Uh, let's see. I don't really need a saddle anymore. The recipe book is pretty immense. It's 157 pages of six recipes per page. That's 942 recipes. Although it's actually 941 because the last page is only has five on it. And the true number of recipes is actually a bit lower because there are a handful of recipes that are like put item on crafting grid and then pull back out again to do X. But still, that's pretty impressive. Anyway, so let's see, so put that back. Now that I no longer have a handy little time display, I think I'm going to go ahead and build a watch, simply because I'd like to be able to keep track of time. Because bef before Zombies Mod Pack, the world information thing would do that. Now it doesn't. Now I don't know why I have sand in my inventory. But I probably picked it up while I was exploring. Let's see. The sand goes down over here into this chest. Hmm. I already have two stacks of sand. I'll just smelt it. Though actually. No. <coughs> Excuse me. They, I just realized they aren't hooked up. You know, I think I'm gonna have to do that first. Okay. Stand in the chest. Wait, I get that. Yeah, okay. Alright. Get this off my inventory. That off my inventory. Alright. Um. First thing I need to do is clear this. Uh. I think I'll put. Four MFSUs up there. If I can find them. There we go. Okay. 
I'll put these here, like that. Um, yeah. I can fill this in, like that. Alright. And then I'm just going to wire the, uh, all these other things, um, uh, the MFEs. I'm going to wire all the MFEs to the MFSUs so I don't waste any of the power. Okay. Oh, floating redstone. That's cool. Um, let's be careful here. Okay. No, not that. The problem is, I'm used to walking on all the wires, and the wires are all gone, so this is a bit trickier. I really don't need this for right now, and I'll probably end up doing it some other way, so I'm going to take this down. Important thing to remember is my the special abilities are now only on the quantum suit, so I can't jump. I can't, well, not jump really high, and I can't um, uh, do any of the other stuff: speed, jump, invincibility, and so forth. All right, that should that should turn my backpack on. It still provides damage protection, of course, just not invincibility. Alright, so now that that's doing that, that should drain out quite well. Let's see here. Yep, it's drained. Hmm, I need a wrench. I believe I have a wrench back in the other chest. Yep, good, there we go. Wrench. Now, what's the recipe? There's a recipe... I think... It's... Uh, a refined iron. Do I have any... Oops. Do I have any juice in here? Is that enough to smelt one? Uh, not quite. I'll use this. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a nice thing. The, uh... You can use just a bit of power off, uh battery instead of using the whole thing. Alright, um, I believe it's something like this. Oh. <sighs> Alright, I'll have to look it up. Hold on. Right, so I was actually pretty close. It's, uh, battery and a wrench, an electronic circuit, which, of course, it won't accept that because I probably used a bit of charge off the battery. <sighs> That's okay. Got some tin, cables, and everything else, so I'll just do this. Alright, that recipe's changed as well. that. So now that that's done, I'm finished draining all the A. Uh, oops, wrong way. So I'm finished draining all the MFEs. How am I going 
gonna get those. All right, you know what I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to seal the floor here. I shouldn't need to get down there anytime soon, and it's not that hard to do so if I do. Meantime, that will let me get these guys here. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Oh well. I'm not too worried about this. I just figure if it, it's it's so simple to just quickly wire them up real fast before I destroy them that I might as well. Incidentally, if you hold down shift while um, right clicking, instead of bringing up the GUI for an MFE or whatever you're right clicking on, it will simply um, uh, place whatever it is you're looking at. So right now, if I right click, I get this. If I hold down shift, I right click, I do that. Very useful. Now that's drained, and that's drained, I can just pull these out. Like that. Don't need this little loop thing anymore. They're hard to target. Because their hitboxes are small. Thankfully though, their hitboxes are small, so <laughs> that's something at least. Now it's the MFSUs that charge the um, uh, quantum suit, stuff like that, which is why the logic of putting them there is. Like right now, you see this way, I'll get all the power that I had stored up over to the um, uh, MFSUs, where I'll be able to store it because I suspect that for at least a while I'll be working with batteries like I used to. So I might as well you know, get it to a convenient location because it's going to be a while before I have that back up and running. So probably done by now. Yeah, that's done. And that's done. I can pull these out. Of course, all this raises the question, how much of this am I going to edit out? Because this is likely to be somewhat boring. But, I don't know. Generally, when I edit the videos, I end up basically watching the whole video all over again. Which is cool. Because it lets me then add little things in the form of text that I might have missed. Like, <laughs> that one moment in part 30, where I just was trying to talk about the pumpkins I had gathered and was remarking that I had 12 pumpkins. Wow. From a single patch? That's a lot of pumpkins. And instead of say, which is fine, except instead of saying pumpkins, I said mushrooms. And so I'm like, what? <laughs> that was funny. Anyway. Okay, so that's done. Okay. Um... Yeah. Now that I've drained all the local power, oops, that hurt. Yep, but I regenerated. That's very nice. Yeah, careful. Really shouldn't be using my drill. Not for this sort of thing. All right, I'm gonna leave the glass fiber cables on the MFSUs. But then I'm going to. Oops, oops, ow. I actually, to be honest, I kind of like the automatic regeneration, in the sense that it, um, you know, you take a little bit of damage like that, it just repairs it for you automatically. So that's cool. Okay. So as you can see, just, that's all like that. 
to, what I'm going to do, okay, so it took me a few minutes, but I was able to finally remember the logic of how I had set this all up. So now, okay, so I've converted these two towers, so now they'll work good. Um, so now, I need to go underneath and collect, <laughs> that's funny, and collect, um, the power from down here. Let's see, the floor is this level, so, I guess I'll take it down one more. Because these have a nice long range to them. So, that. I need more of them. Now it goes like this, and then go over like this, like that, that, this here. Now let's see. I think actually I need this to be an MFE. Um, I was thinking how I place this. Oh, there we go. Wow, just with those two towers, it's already up to 30,000 to use. So let's see, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, um, 36, I can't go any higher. Or am I at the height already? Ah, there it goes. 36, 37, 38, 39. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and some more. Good, so now they should all be charging. Good, 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 and good. Took a very long time before they're all charged, but it, at least this way. I'm not wasting the power. Eventually, let's see. Yeah, I think MFEs will always cut it. I'll probably convert the MFEs at the bottom of each tower to MF to bat boxes, because each tower at maximum will only put out about 10 EUs. Each room at maximum will only put out about 100 EUs, 110 EUs. And so the idea is, the bottom of each tower will be a bat box that will feed into an MFE at the end of each room. So this will be an MFE that will collect power from all the towers behind it and then will feed up all the way and it will eventually switch to MFSUs at some point. So now 
what I can do is I can put that there. this like this and fill that in. Because the idea is we'll be all under the water or not under water, under the floor. So it'll be nice and clean. So now that that's done I think that's all I'm gonna do with the hacking. That will let me build up a few more with what I've already got. I haven't decided. It's very tempting because glass fiber cables are expensive. It's tempting to just do all the glass fiber cables for the that I need, but then again, I'd like to have some semblance of actually having worked for it. Anyway, um, let's just fix this now that this is no longer the way it's going to be. Oh, I should wire up these rooms. I'm, I forgot, yeah, there are all these other guys. Hmm. I should really just build an energy crystal. Alright, let's see. Um, hmm. I don't really want to use one of my actual diamonds. I guess I'll just work around them for the moment. Yeah, I've got a lot of them. Alright. First thing I need to do is fix the floor. There we go. Come to think of it, I could wire it. Oops. I really should fix the floor. I can wire these to the MFBs and then I'll use the power directly. It'll be a short term fix, but it should work for at least for the short term. Boy, without all the cables here, this place is a complete mess. I think I'll do that. Oops. Oh yeah, I forgot. You can't do that. Oh well, at least... Whatever the first one was broke the circuit, so it wouldn't happen anymore. That would be one of my macerators exploded. So that sucks. But oh well. But yeah, machines designed for low voltage, like the ones that make up my power plant room, physically cannot accept medium voltage. If you give them medium voltage, they go kaboom. Same goes for machines. Basically, the same goes for any. Oops. Uh, I'm really. I understand the logic behind destroying them anyway but using the wrench causing them to only give you a machine block but I do not like that. I didn't even do it on purpose, it was just a simple little misstep. But anyway, um, I'm gonna have to drop it down like this. Don't have the don't have this hooked to anything. And I can't hook it directly to this existing wire. Because this existing wire has a lot of EUs in it. Or it has a high volt has medium voltage in it, and the machines all take low voltage. So 
what I need to do is dig through here until I find this. Actually, I only need one of. Mm. I'll put this mm, here. Now. Good. That will convert the medium voltage to low voltage, and everything will run. Um, since I don't really feel like digging through and building a new one, I could. I've got the resources for it, but whatever. Okay. So that's still doing that. But in theory, these should work. In theory. I suspect if I do that, damn it. that's because in the original system I had uh, um, storage and so I would draw off the capacitance charge but they only periodically needed to do stuff and so every so often I'd do stuff but then it'd have a nice long time to recharge I'm willing to bet there's only like two EUs here That's giving me bad readings because it's cutting through at 100. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like 128 every so often, I guess. So what I need to do is like put a bat box right here. Yeah, because with a bat box right there, which again I don't need one of, then. Good. This will become the storage, right? So when I'm not doing anything, it will charge up, and then it will give me a bit of storage. Okay, so this so that's sort of temporary till I get the rest of this wiring worked out, but that will work for now. All right, so that works. That should work fine. Um, right. I think the next thing I'm going to do is build some more water mills. Actually, the next thing we're going to do is empty my inventory. There's a bunch of stuff I don't need here. Let's go check out my mass fabricator. 29%, nice. So, yeah. I guess there's not much for me to do at this point, but to. Yeah, let's see. Actually, you know what? I just realized something. If I break this, it'll go a lot faster. So now that's going, I guess, this is a good place to call it quits. Sorry if this episode's been rather boring, but... Uh. Right, I think I'm probably just going to stay off camera until I can get on to the interesting stuff, because I think at this point I've pretty much covered everything. So, yeah. See you then.